And I think I was so upset that I started crying. Um, and it was a cry where I couldn't stop crying. Oh, like, I feel like I wanna cry now because, you know, I fought so long to be who I am. And I don't want to change to make other people feel comfortable. If you have an issue, that's your issue. Don't make it mine. What's up, Bats and Ladies? It's your girl, Joy, back with another finger. How you doing? Well, the last video I made, um, I haven't made, well, I made maybe one or two vlogs. I have tons and tons and tons of content, but I haven't done any editing. So when I get back into it, just pretend like it's new stuff. I don't know, I just, like I said in my previous video, I know just a, a few people reached out to me to see if I was okay. I am fine, I'm okay, but I still don't feel like joy. And um, someone reached out to me today, so I said that I was gonna upload this video, let you guys know that I, I'm fine, and you know, it's very touching to know that, you know, there are some people who care um, because they know that I, I'm not always consistent, but I've never been gone this long. And I'm fine. And then, I, you know, like I said, um, I, I've talked about it before, but in older, older videos. So, um, I remember when I graduated from high school um, that was a trigger for me and it was the first time I realized when I had to think back and reflect of where my depression started it was in high school when high school ended and that was a trigger for me and I just fell into a deep depression because high school was my outlet I enjoyed school I enjoyed learning I enjoyed be being around my friends and it was an escape from my reality at home, which I've talked about, um, you know, my life growing up in Brooklyn several times. And I just wanted something different for my life. And so high school was my outlet. High school got me out of the house. Um, it was like a different world. And so when high school ended, I didn't know what to do with myself because I didn't go away to college. I didn't even think that was... A possibility for me at that time so <clears throat> I was working so I went to a community college and blah 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 so that's when I first realized that I was struggling with depression it was it was pretty bad the thoughts the, the, the it was it was bad because I didn't have my old life anymore that I cherished and to this day high school was it for me it wasn't college I didn't bond with anybody in college or anything like that and so from there, that's when I first realized that um, when, I, when I reflect on the past, it was when I realized my depression began. And so blah, 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 then we uh, fast forward like 99 years fast forward. And you know, I would have my bouts here and there like when my mom passed and stuff like that. Um, I was in college by myself, it, it was terrible. Um, that's the one thing you should never do is when you lose a loved one who's like your world, never be alone. Even though you wanna be alone, don't be alone. And I was in Texas at that time because I got into University of Texas at Austin, but I lived off campus and I already had my associate's degree. So I was like the older student and uh, just trying to cope and deal with my mom's death. Mm -mm. Terrible, 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 terrible. So I tried, you know, different medicines, different um uh, groups. I did group therapy with other students who um, lost loved ones and so on and so forth. So I tried a lot of things. So, you know, so although I suffered from depression, rightfully so, um, it was, I, I tried to get help when I knew it was really bad. So I could imagine anybody would feel down, you know, after losing a loved one. But it wasn't like chronic depression, um, but always, always suffered with it. So blah, blah, blah. And so, you know, I, 
as I got older, I learned to cope with it. I learned to reflect and think about what what is it that's bothered me? Why do I feel this way? What, what's going on here? And then I could always pinpoint, you know, this is after decades and decades of learning to live with it. Sometimes I had medication, sometimes I didn't. But learning to live with it. And I, for me, you know, this is just my experience. Everybody experience is different. Like, I know someone whose sister, uh, without medication, they are not functional. I mean, their chemical balance is just off. And so, you know, I'm not, that's like severe, severe. I'm not at that point, never have been. And so when I did talk to therapists decades ago, um, she said that I have functional depression. So like if I go out in society and so on and so forth, you guys would never know unless I told you. But once I get home, it's almost like a, a light switch is flipped. And the depression just sets in. It's like a cloud that just sets in it and cloaks my whole being. And so she she told me, she says, what it's called is it's called functional. Or I'd be so, so joy, 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 happy, 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 you know, when I'm out that no one would ever guess. But when I go home, it's like night and day. And um, I remember another bout is when I was going through um, situation with my kid's dad, it was terrible, 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 terrible. And one thing which is frustrating is that a lot of people say that mental abuse is not abuse. I think mental abuse is worse than physical abuse. And then I was dealing with that situation. Oh, terrible, ter terrible, 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 terrible. Woo! And so, you know, I had to overcome that situation, which put me in a thing. So anyway, so many, many years had passed. And I would have little situations here and there, but none that, you know, that took me out. Uh, and I just figured, so I was talking to someone um, yesterday. And someone who um, reached out to see if I was okay. And I figured, I had to really think. I, I didn't feel like I was depressed, but I didn't feel like me. And I just, I just couldn't figure it out. I'm like, I don't know why. I don't know why I'm feeling. I just don't feel like joy. But it didn't feel like depression. And so, I think I hit the nail on the head. I remember uh, when everything changed. It was when school started. And I think I had a trigger. And I think that trigger happened. I had an incident at school. It was the beginning of the year. I'm not sure if school started and we were in our training phase. It could have been we were in, because we go to, teachers go back to school the week before. Students go back to school. And it could have been then or the first week of school. I don't know. And me, you know, I, I'm, I'm the funny girl, joke around all the time. Um, I'm at an age where I say, I say what the heck I want. But it's always, you know, it's, girl. You know, so it's always in jest or fun or in love. It's never in malice or whatever. And then there was a situation I had at school with another teacher, but they deal with, they're dealing with certain situations mentally. So if I was to say something, maybe it's just coming from me, but coming from somebody else who wouldn't bother them, I don't know. And so I would say something, you know, cute, funny, like, girl, with your eyelashes, you cute with your eyelashes. So whatever I said, it made them feel less than. Well, then that's an issue you have. <laughs> like if somebody said, um, oh, child, I had a student. I, I love this student. I, I'm trying to figure out how to reach a student. And the student said to me, he looked at me one day, I know when I need to do my hair, I do my own hair and I just got to be in the mood, okay? And don't bother me none, <laughs> whatever. And he looked up at my head, it was like, mmm, Miss Basil, new growth. And looked up at the top of my head, I was like, yes, boo, but at least it's growing. You think that hurt my feelings? It, no. He ain't like, I have a confidence, I know who I am. And no matter what you say, <laughs> oh well. You got an issue with that, not me. I'm going to keep it pushing because, you know, like my outfits, some of my outfits are crazy. Uh, and they was like, I'm trying to understand this outfit. It's not for you to understand, honey, <laughs> you know, but you're trying to understand it. So I know I've done my job. You know, I'm doing something that's the basil. And so 
I'm not as sensitive, but I guess there are other people who are as sensitive. So I kind of uh, took it as you're so sensitive. Maybe I shouldn't say anything to you at all. And so it was a whole big thing. It was, it was a whole big thing. And I think it triggered me. It set me off to like, people don't accept me for who I am. They want me to change to make them feel comfortable. I don't know, and I was trying to think, where did it come from? And I think that's, that triggered something in me, and I, and I haven't been the same since. It was just, it was just terrible, and I, and, I, and I think I was so upset that I started crying. Um, and it was a cry where I couldn't stop crying. Oh, like, I feel like I wanna cry now, because, you know, I fought so long to be who I am. And I don't want to change to make other people feel comfortable. If you have an issue, that's your issue. Don't make it mine, you know? Or maybe I just don't say anything to you and I'm good with that. And a person also realized that I'm easy to be like, oh well, cut you off, I don't gotta say nothing to you. You know, I feel as though after you lose someone you love more than life itself and you lose your whole family, Baby, you ain't nothing. You know, I'd have I'd lost. I'd have lost the other half of my heart. So I'm going to keep it pushing. So anyway, and I think that triggered me. And I just, I just kind of, I don't feel like I'm depressed really. I just feel like, I don't know. I just don't feel like joy, joy. And like it took something out of me. I don't know. I can't explain it. But I am fine. I'm trying to crawl out of my little hole. I did a little vlogging. Went to see, um, I went to um, get Sydney, my daughter, situated at Oklahoma State. And then also, there's always the money thing. Um, you know, I have to help Sydney with part of her tuition. I'm barely surviving. So it seems like now that the girls are gone, it's like I spend more just to help them. And as you already know, Bobby, she can't work. And which I'm fine, I'll figure out a way. I've survived this long, I'll continue to survive. And so um, I'm ready to start. I still think about the van living, car living, whatever. So I still have not re-signed my lease here um, at my place where I am. And so I'm thinking of January, January, I'll let them know that I'm gonna try to move out earlier because in order to help the girls, I, I just can't afford all of this and help them. And then when I added Sydney to the car insurance, that car insurance is $500 a month. That's a lot of money. Uh-uh, that's too much. And so that, that's a lot health insurance a lot so it's just a lot and like i said i've survived this long i'll continue to survive so i was thinking about that what i'm gonna do um trying to move out of here so i've been trying to downsize um just a little up at a time like my clothes i'm gonna keep most of my clothes you know i'll get rid of some i got a whole bag that i downsized from my closet and i'll pack up some more stuff for my clothes i you know i do have a plan um, I have one room that's empty already. Uh, when I went to visit Bobby, I brought a whole bunch of stuff with me from the house. I'm like, I'm passing this on to you. And so the garage is still, whew, still a little, got a lot of stuff in the garage still. So I've been taking more stuff to school, um, more things that um, mean, um, mean something to me, something that's, um, meaningful i've been taking more things to school um i have some more furniture that i've taken from the house to school <laughs> so when i finally get around to showing you the classroom we still can't have anything on the walls so and then dealing with students it's not the students really it's the parents and then you know i think i had an incident with a parent or two that really irritated my soul made me think about maybe i should stop teaching do something else you know so i've been dealing with that parent parents mm -mm. the excuses that these parents make for their children oh my god 
it's like somebody scratching on a blackboard. At the end of the day, who is making their child accountable for their actions of not doing work, of not reading, of not submitting assignments? You know, I have 150 students, this, but so much I could do. Are you gonna help me? on your end and then i reach out to parents because it was the very beginning of school i think it was two three weeks and the child had not submitted anything so they're failing and i was like you know that you know i'm looking for a partnership I'm looking for... then i hear i get a an email from a parent oh it looks like you're setting my child up for failure how i'm reaching out to you for help before we get to the end of the grading period and your child has failed the class so i'm asking you for a partnership to help early being proactive than trying to be reactive when they got to make up like 10, 15 assignments. I don't get it. I just don't get it because when Clinton, the girls were fine, thank God they were self-sufficient. But like Clinton, I had to stay on Clinton. You think I let his education and his work ethic, which was not there, you think I put that in his hands? Absolutely not. I did not. I was on my child. You think I'm gonna blame a teacher? No, because my child had a responsibility to do assignments and me as his mother to stay on his tail to make sure he had it done. There are certain things you can't put on a child to be responsible to do. So, I mean, like I, my job, get them through high school. <laughs> what they do after that is kind of their business. They're 18, now Clint's 21. I told him he needs to figure it out. You better figure it out, buddy. You're 21 years old. You don't want to listen to anything I have to say. You better figure it out. You got a few more months left. Oh, well. Oh, well. Mm-mm. Uh -uh. Common sense needs to kick in at some point. I, you, we can't keep babying these kids. And some people try to say, well, you need to prepare them. Yep. I prepared them. I prepared all three the same opportunities, just like I had the same opportunities as my older brother and sister. What I choose to do with the choices that were presented to me, I did something. The other two did not. So we all have choices. And you got to prepare them. I figured it out. And at 21, baby, you better figure it out. Figure it out. And, you know, just like with Bobby and Sydney, we're trying to figure it out. And when you see somebody trying to help themselves, you don't mind helping them, you know, pursue their goals. And then when you're trying to say, hey, buddy, why don't you try this? Hey, buddy, try this. Hey, buddy, try this. And you don't want to try nothing, baby. Next, come on down. Can I help you? Help me help you so we can get it popping. So I'm I'm kind of over that thing and people, you, you got to prepare your kids. Yep, they all had opportunities in life. And if they chose not to take those opportunities, what you want me to do, beg them? Just how, that's how I feel like as a teacher too. Begging them to, to read, begging them to work on our assignments, begging them to submit their stuff. It's exhausting. Begging, begging, begging. At some point, you have to want to receive the help that is presented for you or to you. There are some nights I stay at school in tutorials with certain students who want the lesson to seven o'clock at night. There are days I stay to six o'clock. There are days I may have a student or two that'll come when it's not their, when it's not my tutorial time. I will be there if you want it. I will be there if you want the help. And then I then I leave school 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock to take that hour drive home. I don't have to do that, but I am there if you want it. And if you don't want it, kids don't show up to tutorials. They, they, they don't show up. And so that's how I feel with my son. I, I'm there if you want it. You have to want it. So the new thing that I got a couple of months ago, oh, I'm going to move to Italy. Okay, son, you know, you need a passport, you need a job, you need somewhere to see, you may need a visa, a work stuff, all that paperwork. You just can't stroll up into another country without a full plan. And not, 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 not another state, not another little city, a whole nother country. Well, uh, you got friends in Italy? You, you got a homeboy, homegirl? No. <laughs> that was a month ago. So then, um... Maybe last month, three, four weeks ago. All right, 
What's your plan? What's your plan, buddy? You know, I still think the military be good. You you like to do the cooking thing. You know, I, I've talked to some people where their child did the culinary and they're living their best life, blah, blah, blah. They traveled the world, blah, blah. I'm like, so what's your plan? Oh, 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 my friend, there, there, there's a job in New York. Help me help you. There are some people you just can't help. Do you, do you know that? No matter how, how hard you try, you just can't help them. And I did digress from the depression thing, but that's okay. Because the, the, I, I don't know. So anyway, I'm trying to shake, shake and bake, trying to get the joy back. Um, and there's like, I'm, I'm not, like outside in front of people, they would never ever know that, you know, inside, the spirit is like the light is a little dimmed right now and I'm trying to shake it but I really really think um I think that situation I don't want to say it was a conflict it was, I guess it was a conflict that we were trying to talk to work through um I think that kind of just set me off and I think Shortly after that was the parent. Oh, I'm mean, you set my child up for failure. Miss Bob, put him in another class if you think this is gonna be a better. Bye, bye. It's the parents dealing with them, and that's why that's also part of the reason why so many teachers are leaving this this field. It's the parents, and sometimes it's the administration, sometimes it's the amount of work that we have to do. Insurmountable. Insurmountable, and I'm still confused how some kids making and they keep getting promoted, getting promoted. When we get back the data and look at the data, and I teach seventh grade, I teach seventh and eighth grade, and then you see that certain kids are on first grade, second grade, third grade overall reading, but then you in the seventh grade, how did you get here? What 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 happened or what didn't happen from the second grade level? All the way, boop, boop, boop. What, what happened in between? And how did you get here? Why weren't these gaps filled along the way? Do your parents not know this? So I'm like, you want us to give them the seventh grade test, but they're reading on second, third, fourth grade level. But you got, we got to give them, we have to give them this test. So do we meet them down here? But then we still have to give them this test. But they on third, fourth grade, some in second grade. That's make it make sense. If there are any educators out there, make it make sense to me. I, I, it's it's like, what do you do? And then the time, and then you got to give them the seventh grade by a certain date. But then we have years. But then we have years and years of deficit. Years. But I got to bring them up. Baby. Just doing the best I can. I help them as much as I can. But then when it's state standardized test time, they still got to take that seventh grade test. I, th I th Make it make sense. Make it make sense. Anyway, I just... I got it all out for you. <laughs> oh, my frustrations. Oh. So, there's some other updates, and I'll get around to editing those videos. I will. Just pretend like it's new. Um, now, I'm getting ready. It's Sunday. I'm getting ready to try to work on some lesson plans, so I'm prepared for Monday. All right. Thank you for reaching out. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video in my closet. You know, when I'm in the closet, y'all. <laughs> when I'm in the closet. <sighs> but I, I'm okay. I'm okay. It's like, like I said, I, I'm okay. It's not so bad where I'm thinking crazy. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. And so I'm still on track for car van living. So I just got to let the owners know that I'm getting up out of here sooner than later so i'm gonna try to wait for the kids to come home for christmas bobby won't be home for november uh, for thanksgiving so i'm trying to wait for christmas 
and spring break and then after that it's a wrap it's a wrap and i just figure it out as i go along it is what it is but the struggle is real too strong it's like now that the girls are gone woof woof it's 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 woof <laughs> and sydney oh i'm, I'm just calm down, calm down. And then Sydney, um, she, she trying to make a little money. She get, she got a, a babysitting gig, so she did that last night. Then she donated plasma, but it didn't make her feel well at all. So she's like, I don't think if it's gonna make me feel that way, mom. I don't know if I can keep doing that. It was a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars a pop, and you could go twice a week. That's a part time job. I was like, girl, you better try one more time. They say you gotta get used to it. Shoot, I'm trying to think how, if I could donate some plasma, plasma. And, um, my anemia is back in full, full force, honey. Ooh, that is good. So, I need to figure out how to set up an appointment again to get some other work done. So, got to deal with that. But, finding the time to make the calls as a teacher during the day, my time is precious. I, I just don't have the time. And then, by the time school's over, everybody close. They just don't make it easy. They just don't make it so that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Bye y'all. Thanks for watching.